Box. Here, we'll start again another lecture. One of the uh, problem, problematic bugs in a period would be your Staphylococcus. So, one of the pathogenic bacteria. Again, my, this is your professor, Dr. Cabrera. And my lectures are all taken from the rapid review of microbiology and immunology. So, let's talk about Staphylococcus. What can you remember about your Staph? So your Staph is a gram-positive cocci with three pathogenic species to humans. One would be your Staphylococcus aureus, which will be the most virulent, followed by your Staphylococcus epidermidis, and your sub Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Among the three uh, species, they share common staphylococcal properties. But all are gram and catalase positive. That's a positive sign and a blue. And in grape like clusters. Okay. They grow in 7.5% salt. And they are all part of the human flora. Fortunately, they are common among us. They are normal part of the normal flora, which are responsible for many nosocomial infections. Now, let's talk about the most virulent strain of your Staphylococcus. It is your Staphylococcus aureus. This is a virulent strain, but it is found in our skin. These are normal flora of our skin and in our anterior nares. So be careful in picking your nose. What are the issues regarding Staphylococcus aureus? They can develop medicinal resistance. Their infection will always be associated with pus formation. Ingested preformed toxins of this organism, of this bacteria, can cause the three hour gastroenteritis. And the toxin can cause your toxic shock syndrome. Okay. So, for Staphylococcus aureus, usually these are all toxin mediated diseases. Like your food poisoning, toxic shock syndrome, and scalded skin syndrome. They are a very important cause of your methicillin resistant strain that causes in the community. The community acquired methicillin resistant strains of your Staphylococcus aureus or your MRSA. Now let's talk about the inflammatory diseases mediated by your pyogenic and necrotic activities of your Staphylococcus aureus. First is the formation of these tiny pus filled lesion called your in the follicle called your folliculitis, followed by If there will be several folliculitis involved, you don't call that as the foruncle, but a conglomeration of several or two or more foruncles will be your ah, the carbon. See, this is carbon on the back of the neck or in the neck. Look, those, those are many furuncles, okay? It may have started with just folliculitis, then developed into furunculosis, then later on into carbuncle. 
See how devastating Staphylococcus aureus is. So how is Staphylococcus aureus being transmitted? First is through person-to-person -person contact or via inanimate objects called your fomites, like in your slippers, your bottle, your jackets, your bottle dresses, your bottle socks, and everything. So it can be transmitted through those inanimate objects. Or endogenous spread via blood or aspiration of nasal secretion. Okay? So these are the, the root of transmission. Unfortunately, Staphylococcus aureus is a major cause of your nosocomial and wound infection, the hospital-acquired infection and wound infection. How about if you accidentally ingest contaminated food, which are teeming with preformed enterotoxins, okay? So, your staphylococcus can multiply and make toxin in salted smoke meats like your cold cuts, as well as your creamy foods like your potato or egg salads. If they are unrefrigerated for extended periods, unfortunately, if you think heating them can protect you, no, the heating does not destroy the heat-stable enterotoxins. Thus, your Staphylococcus uh, aureus food poisoning is known as the food poisoning that occurs in less than 3 hours after ingestion because of the preformed toxin, so, which are quick-acting. How do we treat Staphylococcus aureus? Most Staphylococci produce Penicillinase, these are enzymes, a beta-lactamase. So, we treat them with penicillinase-resistant beta-lactamase penicillin derivatives like your nafcillin, your oxacillin, or your meticillin. However, there's again another problem. The development of resistance to meticillin, which means resistance if a if staph aureus will be developing resistance to methicillin, it means it will be resistant to all beta-lactam antibiotics. Thus, MRSA or methicillin-resistant staphylococcus aureus strain, usually a hospital acquired, the treatment would be vancomycin, dinozolid, daptomycin, tagicycline, Tindamycin and the commonly used trimethoprine sulfatometoxazole or otherwise known as your cotrimoxazole. Unfortunately, in this era, your community acquired MRSA are becoming more common. Thus, we are still fortunate. If they are common, we can still treat them with a very common antibiotic. This is called your cotrimoxazole or your trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole. How about the two other two species of your Staphylococcus, your Staphylococcus epidermidis and your Staph Staphylococcus saprophyticus? If your Staphylococcus uh, aureus is a coagulase positive species, your these two are coagulase negative, so they are less uh, problem, and they are normally benign colonizers of the skin. They are less virulent than your Staphylococcus aureus, but your Staphylococcus epidermidis is known to adhere to artificial heart valves, so those with prosthetics vascular catheters in your IV catheters in shunts is your uh, ven venoperitoneal shunts and prosthetic joints 
they colonize the implant area causing tissue destruction mediated by that degradative enzymes. For Staphylococcus epidermidis, vancomycin is the drug of choice. For your Staphylococcus saprophyticus, these are always uh, your Staphylococcus saprophyticus are frequent cause of your urinary, urinary tract infections in sexually active young women. So treatment for your Staphylococcus saprophyticus would be your oral cephalosporin. So it's just first generation cephalosporin and your amoxicillin clavulinate or your coamoxiclav. And now, we'll discuss cases that are, uh, that are given for the uh, diseases caused by your Staphylococcus aureus. So these are quick cases. These are all toxin-mediated diseases. The first would be a food poisoning due to enterotoxin A to E. The case presents as an individual with severe nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea which develops four hours after eating potato salad and ham sandwiches at a picnic. Complete recovery was achieved after bed rest for two days and hydration. Next would be your scalded skin syndrome due to exfoliative toxin. The case reads as a young child with blister-like lesions widely disseminated over the, lar over the body with large areas of discriminated epithelium, but later all noted to have no scars. So there are two cases regarding your toxic shock syndrome due to your T SST1, your super antigen. A young woman with rapid onset of fever, diarrhea, discriminating rash, multi-system organ involvement, wow, kidney failure, shock with general flushing of the skin and mucous membranes. The source examination shows a tampon lodge in her vagina. So this is a toxic shock syndrome due to PSST1 as super antigen. Next case would be a toxic shock syndrome due just to PSST1. A child or adolescent develops shock with multi-organ failure and generous flushing of the skin and mucous membrane within days of sustaining a deep wound so this is a, a toxic shock syndrome due to PSST1 now we'll be talking about superative cases for superative infections okay like example of your community acquired MRSA a high school football player with necrotizing fasciitis is treated with clindamycin However, other members of the team also have skin infections like boils and abscesses. For carbuncle, a diabetic patient who has a poor control of his blood glucose presents with a large swollen area of redness on one leg. For endocarditis, in a patient, there's the development of recent uh, development of fever, then later on petechial lesions, and detection of a new heart murmur in a patient with an intravascular catheter. In petigo, a child presents with honey-colored or clear cast over ruptured pustules, usually bullous lesions on the face with intense itching. Osteomyelitis, uh, Stomelitis and tichyanthritis, the most common process would be your Staphylococcus aureus. Child with fever and localized pain and swelling below the right knee following orthopedic surgery. Culture produce yielded Staphylococcus aureus. For pneumonia, individually, an individual suddenly develops fever, difficult of breathing, and empyema. Is an intrapleural abscess soon after recovering from influenza. So, from a viral infection, later on, uh, there is now uh, aspiration of nasal secretions. So, develop now staphylococcal pneumonia and it produces empyema. And wound infection, an elderly man with fever and redness and swelling recite of recent 
surgery. And that's it, folks. We've done with the lecture. This is your professor, Dr. Cabrera, saying marami salamat po. See you next session. Study very well. Have a great day. After watching this video, please click the thumb up sign and subscribe to my channel and click the notification button, the bell, so that you will be notified whenever I'll be posting another educational video. Have a great day.